this animal's down here. Piece of carpet that comes all the way across. Absolutely nuts. The Frankenstein Castle is a hilltop castle that sits in Odenwald overlooking the city of Darmstadt. It is thought that this castle was the inspiration for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein novel. The name Frankenstein means Stone of the Franks. The name is often used for castles in this region. The castle was built in 1252 by a ruler by the name of Lord Conrad. The castle was enlarged and modernised over the years. During the 18th century the castle was used as a refuge and hospital ward. Following this the castle fell into ruins. There are a few myths and legends at the castle. There was a man named Johann Conrad Dippel who reportedly was born in the castle. As he grew up he became a professional alchemist. As well as this he became intrigued by anatomy. There are rumours that he started to experiment using human bodies. Even more than this they said that he attempted to reanimate his experiments using lightning. The people didn't approve of his experiments. The local people still tell stories of Dippel including Mary Shelley's grandmother. It is thought that this was the basis of his story that is well known today. There are many tales like this from the castle. It seems to have seen a lot of phenomenal things since it was built. There is also the story of Lord George and the dragon. In the 1800s it is said there was a dangerous dragon that lived in the well. Every night it would crawl from the well and make its way to the local village where it would eat the peasants. They live in fear of the dragon taking more of them. One day a knight named Lord George came through town and they pleaded with him to end the dragon's reign of terror. The next day he put on his armour and rode up to the castle to find the well. He found the dragon and the two fought for hours. They were both ready to pass out from exhaustion when George landed the final blow to the dragon. As he fell, he struck the knight with his tail which contained poison. The village was so relieved and happy that the dragon was gone, they gave George an honourable burial. To this day you can visit and pay respects to him. It is said that today the ghosts of these tales haunt the castle. Although the castle is in ruins, the stories and spirits still remain. If the Frankenstein story is anything to go by, these are some spirits that you should avoid at all costs. You wouldn't want to reanimate a soul coming after you or latching onto your vessel. Coming in at number 4 we have Black Forest. The Black Forest is a large mountain range in southwest Germany. With such an ominous sounding name it should come as no surprise that the mountain is considered to be haunted. The local folklore tells of ghosts, witches and werewolves. Some even claim that the devil haunts the forest. One of the now most famous stories is that of Der Grobman, who most probably don't know was the origin of Slenderman. The story goes that Der Grobman was a fairy who lived in the Black Forest. The local children were warned if they wandered into the forest they would be taken. For children who did go in the forest despite the warning, the tall man would chase them throughout the forest until he finally caught them. He would often prolong his search to taunt the children. Once he had them in his clutches he would steal them away, they would never be seen again. His appearance is tall, incredibly thin with multiple upper limbs like that of a spider. It is said he can easily hide behind the trees, making his limbs stretch out like branches of a tree. There are even some woodcuts of the creature reaching back to the 16th to 18th century. There is evidence reaching back even further in time. A journal entry was found of a distraught parent. There is a long history of Der Grobman wreaking havoc on the local community. It is believed that this creature still lives in the Black Forest. The local residents still warn about children wandering off from their family. They try to warn any tourists who would want to camp in the forest or go for a hike overnight. Unless you want to meet the real life Slender Man, I would avoid this on your trip across Germany. Coming in at number 3 we have Elts Castle. Elts Castle is nestled in the hill of Germany. It is still owned by the families who originally built it more than 30 33 generations ago. Elks Castle is one of the only castles left which has never been destroyed by the events of the medieval era or subsequent wars. The house is split into three sections due to the three families who built on the land together. The Rubenach and Rodendorf sections of the home are open to the public, but the Kempenich branch of the family uses the other third of the castle. The public can visit to view the treasury. They have gold, silver and other historic artifacts including an armory with weapons. The castle is a popular tourist attraction and not just for its beauty beauty and history. It is also a hotspot for ghosts. Although the castle has never been destroyed due to war, it has still seen its fair share of battles and tragic events. It is said that if you were to visit the castle in the later hours you would see the night patrol. Only there isn't any patrol, or at least none dressed in full night gear standing in formation like you might see. It is rumoured that the ghosts of past night still patrol the land. They might have died while standing their ground, refusing to leave their post in their 
their death. They still keep watch over the castle. They have been seen walking around looking for any possible intruders. Coming in at number 2 we have Barbenhausen Barracks. The town of Barbenhausen includes a lot of medieval structures including a castle from the 12th century. They also have a city wall that was mostly knocked down during war along with many old homes that were used during World War 2. When the last member of the family who built and owned the town died there was a 35 year conflict over who would have the right to inherit it. The town has seen a lot of battles and conflict for a small town situated close to Frankfurt. It seems the land here was sought after and people were willing to fight to get it. The town still stands today with the remains of its past, a little run down but still standing. It is believed that areas of the town are haunted by the ghosts of World War 2 soldiers. There have been classic signs of paranormal activity reported by locals and those who happen to pass through the town. Lights in homes turn off and on by themselves, even ones that are unlived in. Others have heard stomping footsteps with no source. It sounds like a great number of soldiers marching all at once but if you were to investigate you would see nothing there to create the noise. The most terrifying part of the hauntings are the voices. They have been heard in multiple homes, they often come from the basement like a whisper. When you hear the voices you are filled with fear as if the voices are scared of being found out. There is also an individual ghost in the area. A woman's voice has been heard speaking backwards or in some language no one could understand. It has been reported that a witch was burned at the stake in the 19th century and it's believed she is still there. Some say she seduced and attacked several German soldiers in an attempt to protect her land when they were staying in the town. The town is full of history that might intrigue you to visit but be warned there are many spirits trapped here and they might not all be so friendly. And finally in at number 1 we have Kranzberg Castle. Kranzberg Castle was built in 1170 to fortify the area of Kranzberg. The medieval building was acquired by the military and used for intelligence purposes during World War 2 and the Cold War. It has over time been restored to its original state to preserve its history. During its military use it gained a lot of negative stories and people viewed it as somewhere to avoid at all costs. After the war it was turned into a prison camp for war criminals. It's reported that the castle has seen a lot of death. People may have been tortured for information or to find out their involvement in the war. Either way, the energy here was evil. Since this period of time, there have been reports of paranormal events happening frequently. There is even a bunker that was built under the castle to contain the secret of things happening here. This links to other buildings in the area. They use this to smuggle prisoners under the castle. If you were to visit the castle or if you brave the bunker, if you can find it, you would experience some intense paranormal activities. Screams have been heard from around the castle, screams that are begging for help or for mercy. There have even been ghosts dressed in military uniform walking around the castle late at night. There is a lot of mystery here and secrets that people wanted to hide from the public. You might get surprised if you were to investigate too much into what happened here. Number 5 on this list is Abbaye de Mortemer. This abbey is located in the French town of Mortemer in the Normandy region and has a deep history to it. In the mid 1500s this was a prosperous area filled with a bunch of monks. It was a growing town that was one of the most successful in the region. This didn't last too long though. When the 1700s struck things changed quickly. The men who were funding this town grew greedy and cared little for the people that were living there. The abbey itself started to deteriorate and the monks began moving out. Soon it was a shell of its former self and only had 4 monks that it housed. This wasn't the end though because in 1789 this abbey saw the worst horror of its history. The French revolution was at its height and sweeping its way through France. Religion was completely out of favour and that meant the 4 monks that were living there were also out of favour. When the revolutionaries got to this location and found these monks, they didn't hold back. They took them into the cellar of this abbey and brutally massacred all four of them with no provocation. People think that this was one of the main incidents that caused this place to become one with the spirits. Since then many ghostly sightings have been reported at this spot. One of the most famous stories was in World War II. A British paratrooper landed in the forest nearby and was spotted by the Germans. He thought he was doomed for until a monk appeared out of nowhere and guided him to safety. It's believed that this is one of the spirits of the dead monks still trying to help those in desperate need. One of the most famous ghostly legends is the woman in white who wanders the grounds. This ethereal being floats through the area and was even photographed once before. Her origin is currently unknown but it seems that after the monks were killed this area became home to not only their spirits but many. Werewolves, goblin cats and other demonic things have also been spotted here. This place is deeply haunted and even though that one paratrooper was saved by a ghost, I think that's the exception rather than the rule and for that reason, 
I still wouldn't recommend going here. Number four on this list is the Chateau de Brissac. This chateau in France is located in the Loire River Valley south of the village of Angers in France. It's a very beautiful chateau and extremely unique because it's actually a mix of two different chateaus. In the early 11th century an initial castle was built on the land but then several hundred years later in the 15th century the land was taken over by the Duke of Brissac who had his own vision for the space. He tore down most of the castle except for the twin medieval towers and then built around those so you get this very interesting style of chateau. This chateau is also apparently the tallest in all of France. The great beauty of this castle and unique architecture aren't the only things that distinguish it though because it's also one of the most haunted. An expert on the castle named Wesley McDermott gives great insight into the entity haunting this building where he says, A double murder that occurred sometime in the 15th century within the walls of the castle has resulted in one of the more popular ghosts of the Chateau de Brissac, that of the La Dame there, or Green Lady. The current residents, the Duke of Brissac and his family have become accustomed to her roaming the rooms but she has scared many a guest. She's often seen in the tower room of the chapelle wearing her green dress. What's most terrifying however is her face. If she looks at you, you'll see that her face has gaping holes where her eyes and her nose should be resembling a corpse. As well as her sighting, her moans are often heard throughout the castle in the early hours. After researching this, I found that Wesley was correct and there is no end to the stories and encounters people have had with this green lady. I honestly do recommend going to this castle to look at its beautiful exterior. Going inside though, is something that I wouldn't do. Number 3 on this list is Grey Le Bains. This is a commune that is in the southeastern part of France. The reason why this town is so haunted is because of all the conflicts that have taken place there over the years. If you name any significant war that has happened within France, it's most likely that at some point or another, a battle was fought at this place. This has caused a lot of untimely death of soldiers and also the civilians who were living there. All of this death has left some spirits behind and made it so that this town is deeply haunted. Even though this is a town, the area that is most haunted seems to be located close to the castle at the top of this town. The reason that I say at the top is because this is a mountaintop village and the way that this town is laid out has the castle right at the zenith. Therefore everything is cascading down from this haunted castle that towers over the rest of the residents. There isn't one ghost who lays a rule to this town but a collection of ghostly spirits. It's said that if you walk around the castle at nighttime, then many voices will start to speak out of thin air. Shadows will dance on the walls as if someone is around you but once again there will be nothing. People also report having a a deep sense of uneasiness when they're in this area and feel unwanted. The ghosts here don't sound as dangerous as some of the other ones, but I still don't recommend checking this place out. Number two on this list is Chateau de Blende la Tour. This is a castle that is located directly in the village of Blende la Tour. This castle certainly isn't the most ornate in nature. It looks to prioritize functionality over beauty. This was largely because its main use was during the 100 years war and the French wanted to make sure it wouldn't get captured by the British. This castle is very unique with its haunting. It's always haunted by one specific ghost which I'm going to get into but on one particular day of the year this place goes off the rails with paranormal activity and it's this event that has given the castle the title as the most haunted castle in all of France. At midnight on All Saints Day, which is on November the 1st, it's said that a plethora of phantoms will fly out and circle around the tower of this castle. They will scream and wail and cause a major ruckus. People have also said that these wailings feel inherently sinister in nature, almost as if these ghosts are driving people away from this place. Reports have also said that chains can be heard smashing against the walls and screams from below in the tower are heard as if people are locked up there. This event only takes place on November 1st at midnight though and is now part of the lore and culture around this village. On a regular day, this castle isn't completely without ghostly apparitions though. The ghost of the master of the castle from the 11th century century walks throughout in a bloodied outfit. It's said that he was murdered with a dagger and that his spirit walks around to this day still holding that same dagger which killed him. Number one on this list is Chateau de Bonaguil. This castle is located in saint francois sur la masse and was built in the medieval ages. It's decently well kept considering how old it is today. As with most castles that were built around that time, this one played a critical role in the 100 years war. It's said that it was fought over multiple times and retaken by both sides multiple times as well. Aside 
aside from its deep history, reports of a potential haunting have run rampant all throughout France. In fact, people were so convinced that a spiritual presence was living here that a team went to go investigate it. This group of paranormal experts went in and made some startling discoveries. They said that when they got there, the thing that they noticed and detected the most was the sensation of somebody touching their shoulder, as if somebody was right behind you and had their hand just on one of your shoulders. This went hand in hand with a sensation of burning. Apparently the burning didn't have them in pure agony, but they were all reportedly uncomfortable for sure. The temperature changes didn't stop there either because it also got incredibly cold all of a sudden. Creepy noises, loud shouts, and a very guttural and deep moan that echoed throughout the castle were all things that this group had reported as well. Nobody knows who or what ghostly spirit is causing these occurrences, but it's clear that something isn't quite right about this French chateau. Number five on this list is the Chateau de Camargue. The Chateau de Camargue is located in Perigord, an ancient region of France. The chateau isn't as beautiful as it once was, some of its former glory lost to time and also to war. This chateau was a critical point of interest in the 100 years war between France and Britain. It was the host to one of the more brutal fights that the war ever saw and was eventually captured by the British. As was typical back then, when you captured a place, many of the people that were running that place were either captured or put to death. One person of interest was put to death by being beheaded and that was the young lover of the daughter of the Earl of Camargue. It it said that this man was deeply in love with the daughter and that she was in love with him as well. His beheading didn't seem like a major point of interest to the British at the time, but it actually left a bit of a spirit behind. What's really interesting about this story though is that it wasn't the spirit of this young man that was left behind, it also wasn't the spirit of the young daughter or even the Earl of Camarque himself. In fact, it was the spirit of this young man's horse. The horse that this young man rode into battle with to attempt to defend the chateau and the horse that he had his whole life. Its ghost has yet to pass on. It's said that the ghost of this horse wanders the grounds of the chateau searching for its master. People who have ventured into the castle have reported hearing the clicking of hooves and a deep groan from a horse. People have also reported seeing this dead horse's ghost walking around the grounds of the chateau as if it was defending it from potential invaders like it did in the past. It's suggested that if you do intend to visit this chateau, that you don't bring any negative energy with you. The horse could potentially interpret this as a threat and come after you. Some have even suggested bringing a carrot or an apple and leaving it at the front of the chateau as a sign of good faith towards this ghostly steed. Number four on this list is the Palace de Tuileries. The Palace des Tuileries is home to one of France's most known ghosts who has been nicknamed the Red Man. The Red Man has been around for several hundred years and has two potential stories of origin. The first story talks about a man nicknamed Jack the Skinner worked for Catherine de Medici after her husband Henry II died. He worked as a hitman for her and would be sent to murder potential political foes. He was exceptional at his work but eventually there grew a time where the Queen was worried that he knew too much about about her. After all, he knew exactly how many people she had had executed considering he had done the executing. To make sure her secrets were safe, she had another man murder him. He killed him in the garden, which I should note is typically the area linked to this haunting, and then he left his body in said garden. When he came back to fetch the corpse, it was missing. Then the queen's astrologist told her that he foretold some great disaster happening to the people of Tuileries and that John would be at the forefront of it. Since then, whenever the red man appears, it's said that a tragic event will happen to the people surrounding his appearance. The second origin story is that when this palace was built, the red man was already there. This ghost spoke to Catherine de Medici and foretold her death, and even though she forsook him and the palace that she had built, the prediction he had made turned out to eventually be true. Pierre-Jean de Berenger, a famous French poet, describes the red man as being a small man clothed from top to toe in scarlet, whose eye is so piercing and unearthly that it terrifies the most courageous. He never speaks, nor air his visits of much length. He vanishes soon after his presence is discovered. This has been echoed throughout time as many French nobles have received visits from the red man before. Henry IV, Louis XVI, Mary Antoinette have all had visits from him in the past. There is even a story talking about how the red man appeared in front of Napoleon right before his death. There are tons of beautiful palaces in France and if it was me, I'd avoid this one and go to one of them. Better to be safe than sorry when we're dealing with a devil-like demon whose presence 
means impending doom. Number three on this list is the Rue de Chantre. This is considered by most to be the most haunted streets in France. It's located in Paris on the island and is right next to the Notre Dame Cathedral. This street is said to be haunted by the ghosts of many children. As with most ghost stories, this didn't come out of thin air, but from a horrible tragedy that took place on this street just over 100 years ago. In the early 1900s, there was a hotel that was located on this street. This hotel didn't really act as a hotel though, because during that time there was a massive outbreak of tuberculosis. The children in the area who had come down with the disease were sent to this hotel to quarantine. They were locked in the bedrooms of this hotel and couldn't leave at any point for risk of infecting other people. Some children died during these quarantines, which is already bad, but the main tragedy happened roughly a decade later in 1910. In 1910, there was a great flood of Paris where the River Sien overflowed and flooded the city. All the children that were currently locked inside their bedrooms at this time drowned during that flood. Nobody knows for sure the exact number of children who died in this tragedy, but it was certainly enough to make a spiritual imprint on the street. Now their souls go without rest and live along the street. People have heard the laughter and also the crying of children. They have heard the muffled screams as if they're screaming through water. They've also seen these children before peering out at them from around corners looking extremely sad and lonely. The spot acts as an attraction for supernatural hunters, but a landmark that I wouldn't recommend visiting. Number two on this list is Mont Saint Michel. Mont Saint Michel is one of the most beautiful and unique castles on the entire planet, in my opinion. How it's constructed and where it's located, it almost doesn't even seem like something out of real life. This castle is located off of the Normandy coast, and the only connection that it has to France is a road that goes underwater when it's high tide. How this place got made has a bit of a supernatural story to it. Apparently, the archangel Michael appeared to St. Aubert in a dream and told him to start building here. When he resisted, Michael burned a hole right in his head. After this incident, the castle began its construction and it took quite a while to become the beauty that we have today. It was a work in progress with more things being added over the years. Now because of this castle's location directly in the water, it is extremely hard to attack and was never captured during the 100 years war. During said war, one of the major commanders of this castle was Louis d'Estouville. His ghost is one of the most common sightings at this place. He apparently is responsible for the killing of thousands of English soldiers and had battles that were so deadly the water around them would turn red with blood. He's said to patrol the castle and act as a watchman of sorts for intruders and people posing a threat. Similar to our previous entry of the horse, one of his main objectives is to keep the castle safe. He isn't the only ghost at this spot though. The ghosts of monks can also be seen praying and meditating at this location. For a long time, this castle housed several hundred monks until they were ultimately kicked out from the space. Their spirits still linger in this place though, although they aren't nearly as frightening as the weathered war general, in my opinion. Number one on this list is the Paris Catacombs. The Paris Catacombs is unlike anything else on the entire planet and is the breeding ground for scary stories. These catacombs are a collection of tunnels that are underneath the city of Paris and stretch for over 2,000 acres. The tunnels act as an underground cemetery where they house over six Six million dead bodies. This is one of the largest collections of the dead in the entire world and if that wasn't enough, you can actually see their skulls as they all line the walls. These catacombs are extremely difficult to navigate. Seeing as there are over 2,000 acres of them and it's underground, people have reported getting extremely lost when they're trying to explore them. This is part of the reason why only a portion of them are open to the public today. But all of this has led to a plethora of ghost stories and legends over the years. For instance, in 2004, a group of police officers were investigating an area of the catacombs that was closed to the public and they came upon something unexpected. A bar, a living room, a workshop, and a meeting area for over 20 people, they were all found. This was alongside a PA system, a camera system recording the area, and a pirated means of electricity. All of this was more than suspicious, but when the officers returned a few days later with some more people, everything was gone, except for a note that read, don't search. This isn't all there is to the catacombs though. In the 1990s, a group was searching through them and found a video camera lying on the ground. They picked it up and examined it and saw that there was a recording. 
The recording was clearly of a man who was very lost in the catacombs and extremely frantic. Scary voices could be heard in the background and the heavy breathing of this man indicated his panic. Finally, the camera fell to the ground and we could hear the man scream. These are just two of the more famous stories to come from these catacombs, but so many other ones of ghosts or demons haunting the area have come from this place. If you were to ever go here, then make sure you have a strong sense of direction and a flashlight because the last thing you would want is to get lost in an underground haunted graveyard. In at number 5 we have Berlin Citadel. The citadel was built in 1559 and is known as one of the best preserved military structures in Europe. It was originally built to protect Spandau from attack. Built specifically to have no blind spots giving an advantage on all sides in the event of an attack. The citadel has seen a lot of destruction and war since it was built but the most famous ghost to live there is the spirit of Anna Sido. Anna was married but had a love affair with Joachim II, the local ruler at the time. As the ruler was dying, he asked his son to take care of Anna. The affair had been frowned upon, but as both of their parents had passed, they had grown closer before he got sick. When he passed, his son didn't keep his promise. He immediately imprisoned her in the citadel. No one ever saw Anna again after that. There was no explanation as to where she had gone or if she had been punished for her love affair with the ruler. There had been reports from visitors of the White Lady, a ghost seen walking around the citadel late at night. Some felt a sudden cold breeze and feeling of dread while walking around the grounds, but still there was no explanation. Years later, the citadel was a big tourist attraction and renovations took place. While they began to renovate, they found the remains of Anna. She had been walled into a cell and left there. This seemed to confirm the rumors that she was the white lady for all these years. Some people have seen her late at night, but others have felt her presence. Even after she was found, her spirit had remained. If you visited today, you might catch a glimpse of her if you were to be there after nightfall. Coming in at number 4, we have Svivkov Castle. The origin of Svivkov goes back to the prehistoric times. A fort was built there in the first century. AD. So it's on the edge of a lake covered in all sides by water making it the perfect place if you're worried about intruders. The castle was built in the early 13th century by King Otaka. It is not known when it was built but the first written mention of the castle was in 1234 when it was owned by the King of Bohemia. It had many owners throughout the years being seized in wars and passed to new rulers. It is now owned by the National Heritage Institute and is open to guests. It is regarded by locals as the creepiest place in Germany. Many refuse to visit or leave before it gets dark as not to disturb the spirits they believe to live there. They believe that the castle is home to a dark supernatural entity. They believe it had been since prehistoric times and has never left the land. There are often voices heard from around the castle. Technical faults happen often with no explanation. It's also been said many animals refuse to go into the building and act strange on the land outside the castle. There have been many times where the staff had lit candles to light up the halls when night falls. There have been times when every candle had been blown out at once, sending chills down the spines of anyone in the area. The most haunted part of the castle is the main tower. There are reports that if you sleep in the tower you will pass away within the year. There are at least two confirmed cases of this happening throughout the castle's history. Coming in at number 3, Osnabrück. Osnabrück was once the site in a major pagan temple and burial area. The pagans decided that they would attempt to convert the German people to the Christian faith. This led to a massacre taking place at the temple. The local forces took the lives of those there including the priests. They then desecrated the graves and broke their altar stones. The pagans built their temples and buried the dead on sacred land. It is believed that this act disturbed the deep magic infused in the land. Now every year during the winter solstice and summer equinox, something strange happens on the land. Strange orbs of light have been seen moving around the area. Screams are heard from miles away. Stains appear on the stones that still lay there today. Although the town have now been built away from the graveyard, you can still visit today. Many locals avoid the land as the spirits there seem angry about what happened to their descendants. It is thought these spirits wield great power and could have revenge when and if they choose to. If you do choose to visit, you need to be warned to be respectful. Do your research before and careful when you arrive. Many have reported seeing terrifying things or feelings like being watched while there. No one visits during the solstice and equinox as this is when the spirits are the most active. Coming in at number 2 we have Peacock Island. Peacock Island is situated in the River Havel in Berlin. In 1685, chemist Johann Kupnell was given financial aid to build a glass foundry on the east of the island. Here he discovered how to produce artificial red glass. When he left the island in 1692, it remained unused for about 100 years until 1793. In 1793, the Prussian King Frederick built the castle for himself and his mistress. This was then passed down through the family and used for many different reasons, including being used 
as an exotic farm. Although the island has a long and exciting history, there are claims it is the original Johan Kucknell who inhabits the island long after her death. It is claimed that Johan was not only into creating glass, but that he experimented with dark magic. It is believed that through his experiments with black magic, he had cursed himself. He attempted to flee the island as to not be attached to the curse, but this didn't work. In the afterlife, he was bound to the land and his old foundry. Those who have visited the island have seen a black figure with glowing red eyes. He is often seen at the stroke of midnight. When he is near, you can feel the chill in your bones. You know that you are in the presence of darkness just by being on the island during his hour. His laboratory still stands today and some have tried to find his old lab to learn all the dark magic and secrets that he tried to hide. It is said a fire nearly destroyed the building. The police believe this to be man made and it's speculated he was trying to destroy the demons and spirits he had accidentally been working with in the lab. He couldn't escape the curse and if you don't want to meet the same fate, I would avoid visiting this building. And finally in at number 1 we have the Waldneal Hostert School. The school was first built in 1913 and then closed in 1937 when it was then used by the National Socialism Party. They wanted to use the building as part of their euthanasia program. They wanted to make their bloodlines pure and strong and they had the idea to use the building to house anyone who was not seen as genetically healthy. All those with hereditary illnesses or who were severely mentally and physically handicapped were classified as lives unworthy of life. They would invite the people they deemed to fall into this category to live in the facility before they would eliminate them. According to data collected, more than 260,000 people fell victim to their war against sick. This was just one of many of these facilities run around Germany. With all of the horrible acts committed here, it is no surprise that it is haunted with the lost souls. The people lost here were taken suddenly and their spirits remain unable to pass on. Some people who have visited reporting hearing blood curdling cries coming up the walls in every direction. Others have seen shadows darting from room to room as though they are watching those who walk there. Other ghosts have been seen looking through the windows or sitting inside the rooms late at night. They don't seem to have bad intentions but they seem to be distraught which can be equally as dangerous if you were to stumble across them unknowingly. Some even claim to see children who have disappeared as soon as they were noticed. The stories from those who have visited are terrifying and chilling to hear. It is enough to warn anyone away from attempting to visit the old school. In at number 5 we have Develli's Cave. Develli's Cave is one of the most famous and well known haunted caves in the world and tourists and locals visit often to try and come in contact with the paranormal spirits that haunt the cave. It's located in Penteli, a mountain to the north of Athens, Greece, and has been around since the 5th century. Back then it was used as a marble quarry by the builders of the Acropolis and the cave was actually discovered by accident during work for the extraction of marble. During the middle ages it was used by orthodox Christian hermits, and later on a small church was built at the entrance of the cave, featuring an unusual double layout. One part devoted to Saint Spyridon and one to Saint Nicholas. It was used as a place of worship for the followers of Pan and the Nymphs. It is also believed to have been and still could possibly be used by other religious groups, mainly occultists. The cave got its name from a belief that an infamous 19th century thief and robber named Develli used the cave as a hideout, and legend has it that he hid his treasures inside the cave, and over the years many people have come to try and find his fortune. Many times throughout history the cave has been used as a shelter for civilians, and in 1977, construction work started on the cave and it's unclear who was behind it. Many believe it might have been the works of the government wanting to use the cave and surrounding areas for the US and Greek army. The cave has been associated with various paranormal activity and ghost sightings since the ancient times, this being the main reason it's being used for a place of worship. The mystical character of the cave continues to fascinate people to this day and dozens of urban legends are connected to the cave. There are numerous tales of people experiencing strange and abnormal activity activity that has taken place in and around the cave. Stories tell of electronics that stop working, water flowing the wrong way, and disappearances of explorers who enter the cave to never emerge again. Also details such as a small handprint near the entrance furthers the mystery of this place. In at number 4, the Necromantian. The Necromantian was an ancient Greek temple built and dedicated to the god and goddess of the underworld. The Necromantian was an ancient Greek temple built and dedicated to the god and goddess of the underworld, Hades and Persephone. According to tradition, it was located on the banks of Acheron River in Epirus, near the ancient city of Ephria. This site was believed to be the door to Hades, the realm of the dead. The word Necromantium means Oracle of the Dead, and the faithful came here to talk to their dead ancestors. Other temples were known to house oracles of the dead, but the Necromantium of Ephira was the most important. It belonged to the Thesprotians, the local Epirate Greek tribe, and they would participate in rituals involving elaborate ceremonies where they would seek to speak to the dead. The people would eat specific foods like 
pork, bread and oysters, said to cleanse the body and would proceed to sacrifice a sheep, and the faithful would descend through a series of meandering corridors leaving offerings to the people as they passed through the iron gates. The celebrants would then witness the priest arise from the floor and fly throughout the temple, said to be possessed by the souls of the dead. The necromantium was also described as the entrance by which Odysseus made his Nakia, which is the ancient Greek cult practice and is a rite by which ghosts were called up by the Greeks and questioned about the future. This temple was believed by many to be the final resting spot once they passed on and their bodies decayed into the earth. Their spirits were released and the necromantium was the final resting place for the dead. Many locals and tourists come to try and communicate with the dead. There is an abundance of paranormal activity in this place and it is known as an entryway to the underworld and is one of the only direct channels on earth for the souls of the underworld to come and communicate with humans. In at number 3 we have Salem Mansion. The Salem Mansion is a dark mysterious and eerie abandoned mansion located in Thessaloniki. The villa was designed in 1878 by Xenophon Paeonidas who was known to be the most famous Greek architect in Thessaloniki. The mansion was bought in 1894 by Emmanuel Salem who was the most important lawyer in the city and an eminent member of the Jewish community. It remained in the family for over 20 years and the family gave its famous name the Salem Mansion. During World War I the villa had changed hands after the Salem family left in 1915 and it became the consulate of the Austro-Hungarian Empire for more than half a century. In 1978 the mansion was damaged extensively by an earthquake that devastated Thessaloniki. To this day the house still belongs to the Italian state but remains deserted. There have been many plans to restore the villa but for some reason it has yet to be done. This mansion is a very mysterious place and even just looking at it you can sense the fear and horror. There are many legends about the place and many paranormal investigators visit this infamous place to try and communicate with whatever horrific beings haunt the mansion. Many people speak of when they have visited the place that they felt cold air around them even in the middle of summer, hearing doors close out of nowhere and hearing steps all throughout the house. Locals have mentioned that they stay away from the sinister house due to all the stories and sightings that have happened here. Many think it's cursed and stay as far away as they can. In 2013 the producers of the hit TV show American Horror Story used a photo of the Salem Mansion for one of the posters promoting the new season because of its haunting appearance. None of the people working on the series ever mentioned the home being in Greece and the series of the show Coven revolves around a group of witches and is set in New Orleans so many believe this house is located in the United States. If you are brave enough to visit the Salem Mansion you have to go all the way to Greece. In at number 2 we have Kontos Mansion. The Kontos Mansion was built in 1900 for Nicholas Kontos who was the Russian consul for Greece and lived there with his wife and four children. The mansion is located beside the ocean in the small village of Anno Lahonia Pelion. Nicholas was one of the most powerful men in central Greece at the time and was widely known in the Fasala area and they owned homes in other places like Volos and Athens. The popular urban legend that surrounds the house is that it's haunted after the death of the Kontos family who was supposedly poisoned by a dead lizard that had fallen into a jug of milk. It was later found out that the children in the family died in their early teens of tuberculosis but the urban legend is reinforced by the funerary monument in the cemetery of Volos which presents a table with a decanter and three chairs around it, each inscribed with each name of the children and the age they passed, but they all said they all died at a very young age. No one really knows the truth, so the rumours of this cursed mansion continue to this day. Another legend believes that many war soldiers also haunt the mansion. During World War II the mansion was occupied by the who used it as headquarters where Greek warriors were interrogated and tortured. There were many Greeks who were tortured and executed in the villa's basement. This mysterious mansion has many different stories and these are reinforced because many other families who lived in the mansion after the Kontos fell into a lot of misfortune as well as people who worked on the home. Many of the past owners reported hearing spine chilling screams and cries causing none of them to stay too long. Some of the workers who helped renovate the villa never saw end results as many of them unexpectedly died before finishing. Many locals tend to stay away from the haunted mansion but many tourists come to experience the haunting for themselves. But this mansion is one of many in Greece that have multiple ghost sightings inside and is truly terrifying. To this day the Kontos mansion stands empty and abandoned which makes this place even scarier. And finally in at number 1 we have Villa Kalagis. The Villa Kalagis is located in the Rafina area of Attica which was owned by Pericles Kalagis who was a very wealthy but disturbed man. The villa was named after him and he stayed in the large mansion with his wife and family. The legend says that in 1910 Pericles took the life of his wife before taking his own life and some versions tell the story of him taking the life of his whole family before taking his own life in the family home. So there are many stories of Pericles and his family haunting the home and many have seen family members running around the home and hearing mysterious footsteps. During World War II the home had been taken over by 
Nazis who used it to imprison and torture Greeks in the cellar, who many believe haunt the cellar to this day. Years later, while attempting to demolish the home, the bulldozer being used suddenly stopped working while approaching the house, and after two of the workers died from sudden heart attacks, all thoughts of knocking down the home were abandoned. Another popular legend regarding the haunted mansion is that Anau accepted a bet from his friend that he couldn't last a night in the famous haunted house. Well, he did last the night, but when his friend came in in the morning to check on his friend, he found him dead in the home. It's said that nothing at all is able to grow for a few meters around the building. Experts who have investigated this phenomenon found that the atmosphere surrounding the house is uncommonly high in negative ions, something that's thought to be linked to paranormal activity. This haunted villa is among one of the most haunted in all of Greece and should be avoided. Number five on this list is the Buddha Labyrinth. Buddha Labyrinth is a series of tunnels that are all connected under Budapest. It's a naturally forming system that humans have cultivated. They've used this place for many different purposes since ancient times. Storage and shelter are right up there as being some of the biggest. They've also, however, hosted some pretty dark and disturbing things here. These tunnels have been used as torture chambers before. They've been used as a prison before and even a dungeon back in the day. Due to some of these darker times that the tunnels have seen, it's believed that there's some residual dark energy that resides here and the tunnels themselves are ultimately haunted. Some of the most commonly spotted spirits in these tunnels are that of three women. A while back, three female skeletons were found in the depths here. The cause of death was never fully confirmed, but it was believed by how they found them that it would have been horribly brutal. These three ghosts haunt this place all the time, and there are even stories about how they used to take people. They would leave the confines of these tunnels and drag unsuspecting victims down here to die. That hasn't happened for several hundred years though, so I think that we're all pretty safe in that regard. They aren't alone down here though. The souls of those who were tortured to death still linger here and oftentimes make themselves known to visitors. Disembodied voices, screams, moans, the feeling of someone's hands grazing over you as you walk past. All of these are very common occurrences down here. We've just seen it time and time again where a place sees a little bit too much darkness and hate and then becomes haunted. The Buddha Labyrinth is definitely one of those examples. Highly recommend keeping it off your itinerary if you're traveling to Hungary anytime soon. Number 4 on this list is Witch Island. Yeah, literally a place called Witch Island obviously is going to be making the list. There's an ancient legend that surrounds this island which has given it its name. It was a classic case where people were thought to be witches and were wrongly accused of such and then ultimately put to death. Let's Travel says, It might seem like a pleasant and relaxed place, but there is a creepy story following this place. Sezgid was suffering from a serious drought and the locals were praying for that. Suddenly one day, rain starts with chunks of ice falling from the sky and many locals were convinced of witchcraft. For that reason, 12 people were caught believing that they were witches. They killed them and since then locals say that they hear desperate voices crying for help on the riverside. Apparitions are also seen super regularly. These are just normal people too, or at least that's what people think. It's pretty much common knowledge at this point that these women weren't witches at all, but just regular people. These ghosts that show up are desperate and in need and they look really sad. They probably won't hurt you, but they'll definitely make you feel something. I'd stay away from this island if you can. Number three on this list is Salgo Tarjani Cemetery. Cemeteries are supposed to be peaceful places where the dead can pass, but sometimes that doesn't happen and they end up like this one, deeply haunted. Orbitz writes, On the far outskirts of Budapest lies a forgotten cemetery straight out of a horror movie. The tall, imposing stone gates now face an outline set on train tracks with an eerie silence only broken a few times an hour by a passing train. A knock on the gates results in two large guard dogs rushing to the iron bars, jaws slapping as they attempt to ward off any unwelcome visitors. Inside, the giant walls of the once magnificent cemetery are rows of impressive tombs of certainly important people of their time. This cemetery is the oldest Jewish burial ground on the pest side of the city, but fell into ruins after most of the Jewish population was forced out of the area during World War II. After a short stint as a Soviet military hangout, the forest is slowly trying to take back the land, gnawing around the massive stone and marble burial chambers. 
Over the years, many of the tombs have been opened and looted of anything of value. The disturbed and derelict cemetery is sure to have at least a few angered spirits still hanging around, making it a place that you may not want to visit after sunset. Angered spirits is right, guys. There are countless stories of people getting literally attacked by unknown entities that they can't defend themselves against. I imagine that these are the spirits of the individuals whose graves were robbed. That is just such a blatant act of darkness that it's bound to wake up the spirits of the dead and anger them. I'm also under the impression that some people were killed here during World War II, which most likely only adds to the haunting. The guard dogs are there for a reason, and in this case, it might actually be for our own safety. Number two on this list is the town of Versprung. This town is also known as the Soviet Ghost Town. Atlas Obscura says, The forest is slowly eating the crumbling buildings within the ghost town. Once a bustling Soviet military base, it now looks like an eerie post-apocalyptic wasteland. This was mainly built in the 1960s to house Soviet soldiers. It functioned like a tiny town for the soldiers and their families, forming an isolated, self-sustaining community. It had many fixtures you'd expect to see in any civilian town, like schools, a movie theater, pubs, and restaurants, though most of the base was dominated by large blocks of barracks. After the Soviet Union fell in the late 1980s, many of the residents left the base. The Hungarian defense forces were gradually laid off, and the nearby war helicopter regiment became defunct in 2004. Now the base's only visitors are curious urban explorers and the occasional airsoft players who dart and duck around many of the neglected buildings. It didn't take long for the abandoned town to begin looking like a scene from an end-of-the-world action thriller. The buildings have begun to fade and fall. Greenery creeps over the unused streets and climbs the walls of the derelict structures. Nature is reclaiming the site from civilization, slowly clutching it within its grasp. So to begin, the town is already pretty freaking creepy. However, there's been rumors of an entity that lives here as well. In the time since it's been abandoned, people believe that a beast or monster has taken up residence here. The few people who have gone here have reported the feeling of being stalked. As if something similar to a predator lives here now and it's out to get them. Talks of a potential werewolf have been thrown out there as well, which I can honestly believe. Whatever this creature is, it's dangerous. Stay away from this town at all costs. And finally, number one on this list is the Isvantelic Train Yard. This is an abandoned trade yard where old cars rot away. Some of these cars rotting here though have seen their fair share of horrors. Alice Obscura says, More than 100 locomotives and train cars rot away, some in deteriorating depots, others out in the field. Among these are some very rare train engines and a few cars that are said to have transported prisoners to Auschwitz during the Holocaust. Built at the beginning of the 20th century as a repair yard for the National Railway, only a few southern parts of the train yard are still in use, while most of it is abandoned. Two large depots, a few smaller sheds, and open-air areas are scattered with locomotives and rail cars, some of them very ancient, others more recent, from Hungary's time as part of the Soviet regime. Some of the trains were brought here to be repaired and then were to be put to the Budapest Railway Museum, but never made it to the display and were instead left behind in the train yard. Now one big reason that they never made it is because these cars are haunted, guys. The literal car that went to Auschwitz. Just think how many horrors that tiny box has seen. The souls of those who were forced in there still linger and this train yard is haunted because of it. I feel for these souls too. They never asked for this and now they've just been forgotten by the world. Hopefully one day they can find rest. Coming in at number 5 we have Ballygally Castle. The Ballygally Castle is said to be one of the most haunted places in Ireland and is haunted by many different ghosts. The haunted castle is in the village of Ballygally in Northern Ireland and overlooks the sea at the head of Ballygally Bay. The castle was built in 1625 by James Shaw of Scotland but now is run as a hotel. The most well known ghost is that of Lady Isabella Shaw or nicknamed the Ghost of Ballygally. Legend has it that her husband Lord James locked her away in a tower where she was supposedly pushed to her death. She is said to roam the halls of the castle looking for her child, who was taken away from her at birth from her cruel husband, Lord James. Many people who stay in the castle say that they are woken up throughout the night due to her knocking on their bedroom doors. The tourists often climb the spiral staircase to view the ghost room where Lady Isabella lived out her final days. In 2003, one of the managers of the hotel, Olga Henry, was once a skeptic of ghosts and paranormal activity. But after spending some time 
working at the hotel, she stated that she believes there is definitely something in the hotel. According to Olga, one guest was staying in one of the rooms in the tower beneath the popular ghost room. And in the middle of the night, he had awoken suddenly, believing he was at home and one of his children had laid a hand on his back. He woke up and said that he could hear a child running around the room and laughing, but he couldn't see anyone around. So he ran out of the room and into the lobby. He was so terrified from what he had experienced and checked out right away and never returned to the hotel again. In December of 2003, Olga was setting up the dungeon room in the tower for guests arriving for a meal. She set up the tables neatly, then locked the room before leaving. Just before the guests were set to arrive, she went back into the room and the tables were now a mess with unfolded napkins and glasses with an unusual scum around them and were now arranged in a circle on the table. Several paranormal investigators and mediums have come to the castle to investigate over the years. A group of mediums that spent the night at the hotel had reported that they had detected more ghosts than there were guests staying at the hotel at the time. In at number 4 we have Liamene Castle. Liamene Castle has an extremely sinister history and is haunted by a woman known as the Red Mary. This castle was originally a basic 5 story Irish tower house which was built around 1480 by a member of the O'Brien family who were one of the last of the high kings of Ireland and a direct descendant of Brian Boru. In 1639 Conor O'Brien married a woman named Mary Nemahone and she became one of the most famous women in Irish folklore who due to her flaming red hair was commonly known as Red Mary. She was born in 1615 and she was married before Connor, but her previous husband died mysteriously and she gained control of his fortune. Due to the fortune, the newlyweds built a large mansion onto the tower house. In 1651, Connor O'Brien died in battle and the Red Mary married once again and again and again. It is believed that she had been married a total of 25 times. After the Red Mary died, the castle had various occupants in later years until it fell into ruins at the end of the 18th century and lays abandoned to this day. But it's often visited by ghost hunters and paranormal investigators. It's believed that the Red Mary haunts the castle after her death to this very day. Mary was said to have a foul temper and if her servants were to displease her, they would be hung out of one of the castle windows. The men by their necks and the women by their hair until they passed away. It's even said if the maids didn't learn to do whatever the Red Lady said, then she would injure them so heavily they would bleed. After her death, it's not known exactly where she is buried, but many think she is beside the castle and locals and tourists claim to have seen an eerie womanly figure walking the halls of the castle. Often looking out the windows, giving this castle the name of being one of the most haunted Irish castles. In at number 3 we have The Crumb. Located in Northern Ireland, Crumlin Road, Gal, or so often called The Crumb, is reportedly one of the most haunted places in Belfast. This former prison was built in the Victorian era and was designed by Sir Charles Lanyon in 1845. It is their only Victorian era prison remaining in Northern Ireland and was one of the most advanced prisons of its day. This prison held some of the most dangerous and mentally ill people in all of Ireland and many prisoners passed away while staying here and they believed to haunt the building to this day. The prison had brutal conditions and children were even held there as young as six for petty crimes like stealing food. This prison held executions and the first known execution was done in 1854 to a man named Robert Henry O'Neill. It's believed over 20 people including Robert had been buried in unmarked graves within the grounds of the girl. These executions were a public demonstration were held in crowds of up to 20,000 people to watch. Later in 1901 there was an execution chamber built and the most dangerous prisoners were sent to this notorious prison to be executed. After closing its doors in 1996 it is now used for events and conferences and during the Halloween season it's open to ghost hunting experiences and for paranormal investigators. This infamous prison is featured on the list of the world's most notorious historic prisons and tourists continue to flock here due to the amount of paranormal activity and ghost sightings over the years. In at number 2 we have Malahide Castle. The Malahide Castle lies in the village of Malahide just north of Dublin and dates back to the 12th century. The estate began in 1185 when Richard Talbot was granted the lands of Malahide and it was home to the Talbot family for 791 years until 1976. The castle was eventually inherited by the 7th Baron Talbot and in 1973 it was passed down after his death to Rose, his sister. Then in 1976 the castle and its grounds were sold to the Irish state. Nowadays the castle is used as a concert venue, tourist attraction and banquet events. It also features a popular botanical garden, sports ground, golf course, tennis court and a children's playground. The castle's best known rooms are the Oak Room and the Great Hall which display Talbot family history and are known to be visited often by paranormal investigators. The tragic story of a murdered jester named Puck is the most notable ghost who haunts the castle. Stories say he had fallen in love with one of the Malhide's prisoners, Lady Eleanor Fitzgerald. Puck was found out when he was stabbed in the heart, ultimately dying, but with his last breath he swore to haunt the castle for all of eternity. Locals and tourists see the ghost of Puck roaming the castle grounds. 
Sources believe that many members of the Talbot family also haunt the castle. When in the late 1700s, 14 members of the family sat down for breakfast in the Great Hall and then later that night all 14 people were suspiciously found dead. It is rumoured to be one of the most haunted castles in Ireland. The castle's residents, workers and visitors have all reported similar eerie happenings and you can learn about all of the different ghost hauntings on the very popular ghost tours including Puck. And finally in at number 1 we have Grace Neal's Bar. Not only are castles and buildings haunted in Ireland, but there is an Irish pub by the name of Grace Neal's Bar that is a popular haunted place. This Irish pub is located in County Down and was built in 1611 and is one of the oldest bars in Ireland. Originally this bar was called the King's Arms when it was first established until it was taken over by Grace Neal. Grace spent years serving drinks to the bar goers. She was known to greet every guest with a kiss on the cheek and a hug and she was described as having a strong spirit. It's believed by many that her ghost has stuck around the bar ever since her death in 1916. Cold spots are felt around this warm atmosphere and some have reported seeing a ghostly figure of a Victorian era woman wandering around the front bar. The current owners of the bar often hear sweeping noises, footsteps and glasses and cups have fallen suddenly off the shelves for seemingly no reason. Not only is Grace the only spirit haunting the bar, staff members of the bar have regularly seen shadowy figures of men passing by in the upstairs area. Several different ghost hunters have visited the 400 year old pub in order to try and find answers for the unexplained sighting, including medium Derek Ackerer and the most haunted team. One ghost hunter Mike Hirons believes he had come across an evil spirit when he was investigating the bar. He stated that the anomaly appeared before him as a ball of light upstairs and was very evil and unpleasant. Spirits sucked the energy from people and he claimed to get very out breath and all his energy was drawn out when he was investigating the bar. Grace Neal's bar is known to be among one of the most haunted bars in the world and the most haunted in all of Ireland. In at number 5 we have Ross Castle. The Ross Castle is one of the most haunted places in all of Ireland. It's located on the edge of Laolini and Killarney National Park in County Kerry. It was built in the late 15th century by the local ruling clan, the O'Donoghues, then changed ownership to the McCarthys in 1580 and finally was leased out to Sir Valentine Brown. But then in 1688 they were exiled after the Glorious Revolution. The castle then became a military barracks which remained so until the early 19th century. The Browns never came back but did build the Kenmare house near Killarney. Leonard has it that Mr O'Donoghue jumped or was sucked out of the window of the Grand Chamber at the top of the castle and disappeared into the waters of the lake along with his horse, his table and his library. It's believed that Mr O'Donoghue now lives in a great palace at the bottom of the lake where he keeps a close eye on his home and haunts many of the newcomers and tourists that visit the castle to this day. Another story is that in 1536 one of the owners of the castle was Richard Nugent who was nicknamed the Black Baron and he had a daughter named Sabina. When Sabina was on a walk along the water by her home she encountered a man named Orwin who was the son of an O'Reilly chieftain who was the sworn enemy of the Black Baron. They chatted for a while and they swore to meet again. Over time they met every day in secrecy and soon fell in love but they knew they could never be together because of the feud between their families. Sounds like Romeo and Juliet. With no hope for them in sight they just decided to elope. One night they met again, decided to flee together and they boarded a boat and started travelling down the lake when a storm came out of nowhere. Nowhere. The waves became too much for them and the boat flipped. Orwin unfortunately drowned because of this. Sabina did survive but knowing her lover was gone she locked herself up in the castle's tower, didn't eat or drink until she fell into a deep sleep to never wake up again and finally be with Orwin again. Sabina eventually did pass away because of this and to this day she continues to haunt the castle. Visitors and guests make frequent encounters with her spirit saying she is still searching for her lover so they can reunite again and the Black Baron's present has also been reported by visitors in and around the castle on numerous occasions. Many tourists have frequently reported waking up numerous times throughout the night, hearing sounds of doors shutting on their own and whispering noises. Few others have also said they feel an eerie presence sitting next to them while in bed. Coming in at number 4 we have Castle Leslie. Castle Leslie is a massive castle that was home to the Leslie clan and the Castle Leslies lay on a private 1000 acre country estate located in County Monaghan. The Leslie family has lived in the estate since 1665 when the land was purchased and given to John Leslie by King Charles II. So he moved in and he lived in the castle with his wife Anita and family. Many tourists and guests have recalled seeing many unexplained 
find things throughout the castle, but the Red Room in particular was the most haunted of the entire castle. It was the centre of the family life at the castle for centuries, especially because it was where Anita Leslie King gave birth to her daughter Leone in this room. Many of the family throughout living in this castle claim to see people, hear things and feel ghostly presence in the room, due to so many people going in and out of the Red Room. It makes sense that it's the most haunted of all rooms in the castle. It's believed that Anita had died in the room, and you can apparently see her and John both walking around the estate trying to find each other and be together again. The castle is now used as a hotel room, and each room is named after members of the Leslie family. So if you ever want to come in contact with members of the late Leslie family, many of their ghosts are seen in their specific rooms rooms, and you can book your stay in any room in the castle, even the Red Room. Not only is it a very popular tourist spot and a hotspot for paranormal investigators, but in 2002 it gained media attention when Sir Paul McCartney married Heather Mills in the church, which is located on the estate. Also, various members of the Churchill family have visited the castle due to family ties they have with the Leslies. In at number 3 we have Clifton Castle. Clifton Castle is located in County Galway and was built in 1818 for John Darcy, who was a local landowner and the owner of the town of Clifton. He had a castle built for him and his large family while he was busy building up the town and it's where they all stayed for the next two decades. In 1839 John died and his oldest son Hyacinth inherited the estate, but everything went downhill in 1845 when famine hit. As hunger struck, the tenants of the Darcy estate gathered on the lawn of the castle to beg and plea for work or food. However, they couldn't get anything and many of them died of starvation on the castle grounds. After the family's death, many peasants moved to the remains of the castle for shelter, but many of the poor died here. It's believed that the family's spirits can still be seen and heard on the property and many of the peasants ghosts are located in around the property as well. The castle has remained abandoned since around 1894 but remains a hotspot for tourists and paranormal investigators, many believed to have seen ghost like figures and hearing weird noises when they have been inside the castle. It's believed you can still see John Darcy roaming in and around the castle looking for food for himself and his family. The castle is also a popular attraction during the Halloween season because of the ghost sightings and paranormal activity. If you're brave enough to visit you can do so and be joined by a tour guide to tell you everything about the castle, ghost sightings and history of the Clifton Castle. In at number 2 we have Bell Valley Castle. The Bell Bell Valley Castle is located in the County Cork, which is next to the small village of Bell Valley. It was initially built by the Anglo-Norman Hodnett family, who were an ambitious family who arrived in Ireland during the 12th century. The Hodnett and Debarry families were in conflict at the time, and it resulted in the Debarrys and their allies, the Roaches, capturing the castle for themselves and renaming it Barrymore, then later on Sir Walter Raleigh gained ownership of the castle. During the 1800s, the castle fell into ruins after many years of being abandoned. It's believed that a faceless woman haunts the castle to this day, and it's Anglo-Norman Hodnett's wife, Margaret. The story says that she had an on and off relationship with a local lord named Clon Rockenby, who had asked for her hand in marriage on many occasions, but she refused. Clon was humiliated and decided to raise a small army to go to the castle and take Margaret by force. The Hodnets fought back against Clon and his men and a standoff began for an entire year. When Clon finally was able to enter the castle, he was shocked to see the state of Margaret. She was starved and looked like a skeleton basically, a shadow of her former self. Clon was enraged and smashed her favourite mirror to pieces. Margaret was known for her love of mirrors to remind her of her renowned beauty, and at the time mirrors were a status symbol with the wealthy. After seeing the mirror shatter, one of the Hodnets killed Clon with a sword. After these events, Margaret descended into insanity. She was said to have sought out mirrors constantly to check if her beauty had returned. Apparently, there was one stone on the castle's wall which had been rubbed smooth over the years, said to be the spot where her favourite mirror used to hang. Because she never got her beauty back, she now haunts the castle after passing away, faceless looking for mirrors around the castle. Many tourists and locals have seen the faceless woman in and around the castle walls. And finally, in at number one, we have Charleville Castle. The Charleville Castle is a gothic style castle and is located in County Offaly. It was built by Thomas More in 1641, and the estate was passed through the hands of Charles More, Lord Tullamore, who was the grandson of Thomas, and when he died in 1674, it went to Jane, then to Charles William Berry. The original mansion was extended into the beautiful castle it is today. Commissioned in 1798, it was designed by Francis Johnson and was built between 1800 and 1812. The most famous of the ghost scene is that of the little girl named Lady Harriet, who died after a fall off a staircase in the castle. Another ghost scene is Lady Harriet's uncle Henry 
Henry Walter who died at the age of 7 from influenza. Although he died in London his body was brought to Ireland and he was buried in the family vault. The volunteers describe Henry and Harriet as terrible twins as these spirits seem to be very mischievous and there is even a famous picture taken in the castle that shows a shadowy little boy. The library that is located in the castle is said to be a hot spot for paranormal activity. People who have visited the library have witnessed a dark shadowy form of an older person on the grounds coming from the door, so the children aren't the only ghosts located in the castle. The Charleville Castle has been claimed to be the most haunted building and grounds in all of Europe. It appeared on many TV shows like Most Haunted, Scariest Places on Earth and Ghost Hunter International. It was also the location for many movies like Becoming Jane, Northanger Abbey and The Green Knight. It's a huge haunted attraction and has been visited by many different psychics and paranormal investigators. In at number 5 we have Loftus Hall. This place may be the most haunted house in all of Ireland and it is said to be haunted by the devil himself. Lotus Hall is a large country house located on the Hook Peninsula in County Wexford. In 1170 Raymond Le Gros came to the county and built this massive castle which was known as the Houseland Castle. The Redmond family replaced the original castle with another in about 1350. This second castle was known as the Hall or Redmond Hall. Later in 1872 John Henry Wellington Graham Loftus undertook took an extensive rebuilding of the entire mansion, adding many of the famous elements like the grand staircase, mosaic tiled floor, elaborate parquet flooring and technical elements that hadn't been seen in houses in Ireland at the time, such as flushing toilets and blown air heating. Charles Tottenham became the lord of the manor in 1752 by marrying the honourable Anne Loftus, the daughter of the first Viscount Loftus, and they had six children. However, his wife became ill and died while the girls were still young. Two years later, Tottenham married his cousin James Jane Cliff, and they lived together, along with one of Charles's daughters in Loftus Hall. One evening, Charles was resting in his home in 1775 with his second wife and daughter from his first marriage, Anne, while the Loftus family were away on business. During a storm, a ship unexpectedly arrived at the Hook Peninsula, where the mansion was located. A young man was welcomed into the mansion. Anne and the young man became very close. One night, the family and the mysterious man were in the games room playing cards, and it was then when Anne noticed the man having a cloven foot. The man went up through the roof, ultimately leading to his demise and leaving behind a large hole in the ceiling which remains today. Soon Anne became mentally ill. It's believed that the family were ashamed of Anne and locked her away in her favourite room which was known as the tapestry room. She refused food and drink and sat with her knees under her chin looking out the tapestry room window, waiting for her mysterious stranger to return until she passed away in the tapestry room in 1775. It is said that when she died they could not straighten her body as her muscles had seized and she was buried in the same sitting position in which she had died. After her death everyone who had lived there says she still haunts the hall to this day. After being purchased by Aidan Quigley in 2011, this building was marketed as a haunted house that hosted guided tours of the house until 2020 when it was put on the market for sale. In at number 4 we have the Abbey of the Black Hag. The old abbey lies on a small valley about 2 miles east of the village of Shannon Golden in the townland of the Old Abbey. In one of the earliest nunneries in Ireland, it is first mentioned in 1290 and was founded on land donated by John Fitz Thomas of Canelo, who had died in 1261. Remains include the Abbey Church with two small spaces adjacent, and one appears to have been a sacristy and a vaulted building to the west. There are also walls and a gate and traces of an orchard, a fish pond and a pigeon house. Modifications to the church in the 15th century saw the inclusion of an east window in the church as well as a doorway in the north. Traces of window decoration, columns and carved tombstones remain. Barrels were also located and the church plate was reportedly found in the late 18th century. It is said that the last abbess terrified the local population with her use of the black arts and sexual practices in a room to the south of the church, and is now called the Black Hag Cell. After the closure of the abbey, the hag remained there and continued to perform her unholy acts, and it's believed she lived unusually long, which caused her ancient skin to become darker and darker over time. Another legend is regarding the Earl of Desmond, and that during his escape from one of the many battles between the Geraldines and the Butlers, the Countess was wounded by an arrow. The the wound was so serious that the Earl believed the Countess had died and buried her beneath the altar in the main chapel. The Countess awoke to find herself buried alive, and when people would see a ghostly figure, they went to her gravesite and they had found her finger bones had been worn out from clawing at the coffin, and it's believed her screams can still be heard to this day. 
In at number three, we have Cork District Lunatic Asylum. The Cork District Lunatic Asylum opened in 1789, and by 1845, the Irish Lunatics Asylum Act allowed for appropriating the lunatic asylum in the city of Cork to the purposes of a district lunatic asylum. The legislation provided for two new asylums, a criminal one in Dundrum, Dublin, and then a 500 bed asylum in Cork. This building was originally in three separate blocks, later to be joined together in the interest of providing more accommodation. To become the longest facade, of any building in the country it opened in 1852. William Saunders Halloran was an Irish psychiatrist who worked at this asylum from the time it opened until his death and was the author of Practical Observations on the Causes and Cure of Insanity. This doctor's methods were extreme and torturous. He created something called the Halloran's Chair, which rotated hysterical patients up to 100 revolutions per minute. It rarely had the desired effect. Inmates lived out their days in a state of paranoia and despair while admitted at the asylum. The horrors of this place finally ended when the asylum was closed in 1992. It stayed abandoned for many years and locals and tourists went to visit this scary place. They claim the tortured souls still remain here and paranormal investigators even visited and claimed to have seen both and heard voices of these tormented souls. Today the building is being converted and renovated into apartments called Atkins Hall. In at number 2 we have the Hellfire Club. The Hellfire Club is located on Mount Pellier Hill in Dublin. The building gets its name because it's believed to be one of the first Freemason lodges in Ireland. Around 1725, William Connolly, who was one of the wealthiest men in Ireland at the time, built this building to be a hunting lodge. Years after the build, the roof was blown off during a storm, and locals believed it was the work of an aggressive spirit seeking vengeance on Connolly for building on their land, and that's when the story started swirling. After Connolly's death, the building was quickly sold and is said to have become a meeting place for the Irish Hellfire Club. The club was founded in 1735 by Richard Parsons, a known dabbler in black magic. The members met at locations across Dublin and were known for their immoral behaviour and debauchery involving alcohol and sex. The secrecy surrounding the club members led to speculation that they were satanists and devil worshippers. The president of the club was named the King of Hell and dressed like Satan with horns, wings and hooves. The members were said to set a place at each meeting for the devil in the hopes that he would attend. They were also said to hold black masses in the lodge during which cats and even servants were sacrificed. Some say the building was deliberately set on fire in order to enhance its hellish atmosphere. The best known Hellfire Club story is the one in which the devil himself appears. A stranger had joined the members at a game of cards. At some point one of the card players dropped a card on the floor. As he bent down to retrieve it, he noticed that the stranger had cloven hoops instead of feet. Another tale concerns a young farmer, curious to find out what went on in the meetings. Climbing up Mount Pellier Hill one night, he was invited by members of the club and allowed to witness the night's activities. He was found the next morning trembling and terrified. Tradition says he spent the rest of his life unable to speak, unable even to remember his name. The Hellfire Club remains burnt out and abandoned on Montpellier Hill looking over Dublin. It is a beautiful sight on a sunny day, but make sure you leave before night. It's a beautiful sight on a sunny day, but make sure you leave before night comes because you may come into contact with the unusual smells, ghostly apparitions, or paranormal sightings. And it's said that satanic rituals are known to be done here. And finally, in at number one, we have Leap Castle. Of the many haunted places in Ireland, Leap Castle is possibly the most notorious of all, and is one of the most well known symbols of haunted Ireland. This place is located in Calderry in County Offaly. There are many accounts of when the main tower was constructed, but could go back as far as 1250 CE and was built by the O'Bannon clan. The O'Bannons were the secondary chieftains of the territory and were subject to the ruling O'Carroll's clan. There are many stories of who or what haunts this place. A red lady ghost is reported to walk the halls holding a dagger, and also two little girls named Charlotte and Emily are reported to run up and down the spiral staircase in the mansion. A red lady ghost is reported to walk the halls holding a dagger, and also two girls named Charlotte and Emily are reported to run up and down the spiral staircase in the mansion. Emily passed away after she fell from the top of the castle's tower, and Charlotte can still be seen running around after her sister and calling her name. The castle was visited by paranormal investigators from shows like Most Haunted and Scariest Places on Earth. These investigators believe the castle is haunted by a sinister elemental spirit. The creature is described as being about the size of a sheep with a human face, black holes for eyes and nose, and giving off the smell of a rotting corpse. During renovation of the castle in the 1900s, workers found an obliette behind a wall in the chapel. 
At the bottom of the shaft were many human skeletons on wooden spikes. When cleaned out, it took three cartloads to remove the bones. Today, the dungeon is now covered over in order to keep people away from it. It's believed that the O'Carrolls would drop guests through the trapdoor to be impaled on the spikes eight feet below and could be haunted by the people killed by the O'Carrolls. The castle describes itself as the world's most haunted house due to the numerous amounts of spirits located here. Coming in at number five is the Hospital of Colorno in Parma. It's considered to be one of the most haunted places in Italy. This asylum began in 1873 and was only used for psychiatric patients and later a hospital for the mentally ill. Later on, they had begun housing people like prostitutes, alcoholics, and even small children, deemed by society as dangerous. At first, only being a temporary situation for patients soon became their permanent home. Doctors and psychiatrists working performed experimental new treatments on the patients, like frontal lobotomies and electroshock therapy. Patients were locked away in small rooms, many forced to stay all day long like they were prisoners, many getting very claustrophobic, and people have said they can see drawings and scratch marks on the inside of the doors from past patients staying in the rooms. The hospitals were closed down in 1979 and now remains abandoned, but the inside still has clothes, scattered documents, old wheelchairs, and blankets. The front area is completely grown over with shrubs, vines, and trees. Anyone can go and visit the asylum, and many who have gone claim they have heard doors slamming, loud thuds, sounds of water, and even seen the ghosts of patients roaming the halls. Coming in at number four, we have Villa de Vici. Number four is Villa de Vici, or the Red House. Considered to be the most haunted house in all of Italy, it was commissioned by Count Felix de Vici, who was the head of the Italian National Guard. The home was built in 1854 by architect Alessandro Sedoli and was Count Felix de Vici's summer home. Unfortunately, Sedoli wasn't able to see the completion of the home due to his death during the construction of the property. Legend has it that the Count returned home to a tragedy regarding his wife and daughters, and later took his own life inside of the house. After the Count's death, his brother had taken over the property and owned it until 1938 before it was left abandoned for the next two decades. Popular occultist Alistair Crowley had been rumoured to spend some time at the home sometime in the 1920s. Fans and followers of Crowley soon began to visit the mansion and some say they performed satanic rituals. A broken piano remains in the abandoned mansion and visitors have claimed to hear it playing while they were there. Others also say ghosts roam the house to this day. Coming in at number three, Villa Magnoni. Next on the list is another abandoned house, the Villa Magnoni, and what makes this story even creepier is not much is known about this house, like who built it or why it has become abandoned. Many attempts to sell the house have failed time and time again. It's now owned by the University of Ferrara. They wanted to turn the villa into a research lab, yet to this day nothing has been done about that. The events in the 1980s really turned this place into a very haunted attraction and gave it its infamous name of the curse of Villa Magnoni. For Four men went to check out the abandoned villa one day and claimed to hear children's voices in the distance. They ran towards it, but nothing was there. Instead, they saw an old woman behind one of the windows screaming at them in a violent rage, telling them to leave now and to never return. The men were terrified and ran, but unfortunately they were all hit by a car, and three out of four of them lost their lives. Due to the tragedy of the guy's death, the town council of Kona had all doors and windows of the villa walled up. But oddly enough, a week later, the window the men had seen the old woman in was now open. Other tourists since then and say they have heard a woman whispering threats whenever they pass the house. Two, we have Chesa de Morti. Our number two spot is given to Chesa de Morti, or more commonly known as the Chapel of the Dead. It's a small church located in central Italy. The church was built in the 11th century by the Normans in a town called Otranto. This popular horror destination got its name from the 813 casualties beheaded during the Turkish massacre of 1480. 128 Ottoman ships landed on the shores of Otranto, and their plan was to take over Italy. It was a violent and bloody attack. The Otranto 
Atlanteans fought back but in the end were no match for the Otamans, who went around killing, looting and setting fire to everything in their path. Once the massive attack was over, the Ottomans made their way to the Otranto Cathedral and found a small group of Christians and attempted to convert them to Islam. When they refused, the Ottomans began to attack and kill all the Christians in the church that day. Thankfully, three kings of Naples, Aragon and Sicily recaptured southern Italy and forced the Ottomans out. In 1711, a chapel was built off the main cathedral dedicated to those killed in the attack. 18 bodies have been mummified and put on display behind the altar along with 100 skulls. This area is known as the Mummy Cemetery. If you're brave enough to go on a tour of this church, the tour guide can tell you how each of the mummies on display passed away. There is also a dungeon-like crypt you can also visit at the church filled with mummified and skeletal remains displayed. Finally coming in at number one, we have Paveglia Island. Paveglia Island, also known as the Island of the Ghosts or the Forbidden Island. Paveglia is a small island between Venice and Lido. This little island was used to quarantine individuals suffering from the plague and other diseases. Many individuals were there living out their final days before being burned in mass graves. If anyone in the surrounding areas were even remotely sick, they were shipped off to the island to be separated from the healthy people and left there to die. In 1922, the island was turned into a mental hospital, bringing in even more tragedy to this already harrowing place. The doctor that ran the hospital conducted many brutal experiments on the patients on the island. He believed that mental illness could be treated and cured with lobotomies, using tools such as hammers, drills, and chisels to perform these experiments. Many say the doctor eventually went mad and took his own life by jumping off the bell tower. A nurse working witnessed this and stated that the doctor survived the fall but was choked to death by a mysterious mist. Somehow the mental hospital stayed open until 1968 before it was abandoned to this day. More than 160,000 victims were cremated on this island over the years and even today more than 50% of the soil on the island is made up of human ash. The island has remained untouched for decades and locals and tourists are banned from visiting. Even though the island doesn't allow tourists, many paranormal groups have filmed episodes about their findings on the island. The Ghost Adventures crew spent 24 hours on the island and they experienced many things such as creepy music, weird energy, unexplainable equipment malfunctions, and when using their ghost monitors, they flew off the charts. Needless to say, this is one of the most, if not the most, creepy and haunted place in Italy, if not the world. Number 5 on this list is Hromovish Meadow. Considering how difficult that is to say, and it did take me a while, for the rest of this entry, I'm going to refer to this place as the Lightning Meadow. The Lightning Meadow is located near the village of Kupiish in the northern areas of the country. It's pretty isolated and completely surrounded by thick forests. Even though it's relatively out in the middle of nowhere, it still developed quite the legend for itself. This is largely due to the incredibly strange phenomena that occur at this place. As you probably guessed by the nickname that I gave to it, these strange occurrences involve lightning. Roughly a dozen people have been struck by lightning at this one location. That's a lot of people to get struck by lightning in one far away Ukrainian meadow. Sometimes this place also emits a very strange glow. Locals will see it in the sky and know to stay away. It's this large cylinder of light that comes from the meadow and darts into the sky so all around the area can see it. This place also reportedly gives off the same feelings as our typical haunted spot, with many people who visit it feeling immense sensations of dread. Potentially they're just dreading getting hit by lightning though because it seems that the odds are pretty good here. Locals avoid this meadow and my recommendation to you, unless you want to get a very powerful shock, is to do the same. Number 4 on this list is Pithirsti Castle. This castle is considered to be one of the most beautiful in the whole country. Its construction started out with a defensive fortification that was built in the 15th century and then blossomed from there to what it is today. The beauty of this castle is slightly overshadowed though by the creepy legends that currently surround it. A Ukrainian blog writes, The history of the famous palace has many mysterious pages. There are many incredible rumors about one of the owners of the castle, a politician, Siorin Rizwuski, because of 
his rather peculiar hobby. They say that in his secret alchemical laboratory, Horisuski was making a magical longevity potion and was searching for a philosopher's stone to create gold. He conducted these experiments and organized treasure hunting to attempt to improve the financial situation of the family. Today in the dungeon of the castle, you can find an alchemical workshop. In the dusk, among the magical items, you can immerse yourself in the mysterious past of the castle. This isn't the only mystery that surrounds this place though. One of the most famous legends talks of a young girl who approaches visitors and asks to be given a prop in Christian burial. It's believed that she's the ghost of a young woman who was banished from the castle by her husband and left for dead. There's also a white lady that floats throughout the castle walls. It's unclear whether the young girl and the white lady are one and the same or if they're two separate ghosts sharing the same space. This castle has been featured on several television shows specifically about haunting so if you desperately do feel the need to visit it then I recommend at least giving one of those a watch first so you know what you're getting yourself into. Number three on this list is Vignina Lake. Vignina Lake is located in central Ukraine and is considered to be one of the most haunted lakes in the world. This lake is often not referred to as Vignina Lake though but actually is the ghost lake. If you ever visit this lake then you'll see a very interesting site. Typically there'll be a lot of people around. Some will be fishing, others may be picnicking, some may be hiking along the side, but no one, not a single person in all of this will be swimming. The name Viknina is a derivative of the Ukrainian word for window. It's believed that this lake is actually a window into a whole other world. That this lake is a portal that can bring spirits from this other dimension and if you aren't careful, send you down into it as well. Because of this lake's designation as a portal to another world, the water has some special qualities. For one, it never freezes. Ukraine can get pretty cold, but no matter how cold the area gets, this lake refuses to freeze over. This is probably due to the incredible amount of energy that's within it. This energy also makes the fish grow incredibly quickly. The rate of growth and the overwhelming size of some of the fish that are in this lake make it one of the best spots for fishermen in the whole country. It's unclear if anyone has actually been lost down into this portal, but it seems the locals believe in this lake legend enough that they don't want to see for themselves. Honestly, seeing a portal to another world would be pretty cool, but who knows what could come out of there. Highly recommend going if you want to fish or see some nice scenery. Highly don't recommend going if you're looking to take a dip though. Number two on this list is Bilharod Dinostrovsky Fortress. Yeah, try saying that five times fast. This fortress is also referred to as the Ackerman Fortress and was first built over a thousand years ago. It's one of the largest castles in all of Ukraine and also one of the biggest tourist attractions. The scenery is lovely, the architecture is beautiful, but the draw of these tourists is typically the hauntings. This castle is built over a collection of underground passageways. These passageways may look abandoned if you go down there, but locals believe them to be the home of some very strange creatures. Reports have come out over the years of people passing by the castle getting attacked by some dark horned entities. These beasts have a very unique and pungent odor to them and are incredibly stealthy. The attacks have taken place at nighttime and the victims of these have said that they were so fast that they couldn't defend themselves. The leading theory is that this is the home to some demon demonic kind of Australopithecus. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, then it's a type of ape that had both human and ape-like features. Very strong, very fast, and excellent climbers, these things used to live in Africa. How they managed to take up refuge at this castle in Ukraine and develop devil horns is anyone's guess. Ukraine has tons of castles to explore, so don't feel bad about leaving this one off your list and visiting some of the other ones instead. Number one on this list is Lisa Hora. Look up any list of haunted spots in Ukraine and I guarantee that they will all have Lisa Hora close to the top. Nowadays, this place is a beautiful Ukrainian park, but it's had a deep and dark history attached to it. It's located in Kiev, and many of the local Kievians don't like to go near it. Over the years, this place has been used as a military plant, a garrison prison, and a defense base. All of these places during their history have been the host of some very untimely and brutal deaths. Maybe the most sinister things that this place has been home to are the ancient pagan rituals that took place here. For several hundreds of years, this was considered to be a a sacred spot and sacrificial pagan rituals would happen every now and again. The pagan sacrifices eventually stopped, but then the state sanctioned executions began. That's right guys, this is also a place where state criminals were executed. In fact, the gallows from that time are said to still be standing. Throw on the fact that there have been an uncomfortably large number of people taking their own life here, and you get the perfect storm to lead to some serious hauntings. For one, the feelings of dread and despair here are widely documented. This is actually why a lot of people believe there 
have been so many self inflicted deaths here. Rather than somebody deciding this is where they want to end their life, they actually enter the park in good spirits and then come to that decision by just being exposed to the environment for a long period of time. Along with these feelings of dread, there have also been a ton of reports about the smell. People have said that they felt the touch by some sort of creature and that an incredibly stinky odor has filled the air when they do. Some people have speculated that maybe this forest is home to the walking dead or guarded by some ogre like being because of these smells. It may even be home to several demons that we've yet to identify. Whatever sick and scary thing lives inside of it, it's clear that it doesn't want you or I poking around its home. Seriously wouldn't recommend putting Lisa Hora on the travel plans if you're headed to Ukraine.